Hey everybody, welcome back. So I know I said I was going to use Tiled today to show you guys how you can make maps similar to this. However, um, I've kind of changed my mind. Uh, instead, I'm just going to go with the Unity Tile system. So some of the arguments I had with how it worked before must have been from a much earlier version because this is working, like I'm not having any of the problems I had before. Um, before, you'd have these seams between things. I'm not really seeing those right now unless they're there and I just can't see them. Um, if I get fed up with this, then I'll come back and do an episode on how to make this in Tiled. But for now, this worked pretty well. So uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to do part one of getting the camera to follow the player. And we're going to go with the simplest version of it first. So first thing I'm going to do is grab my main camera and I'm going to unparent it from the player. Now that the camera is freestanding, I'm going to go to my scripts folder. I'm going to right click and choose create. C sharp script. And I'm going to call this one camera movement. And I'll open this up in Visual Studio. And I don't have my Visual Studio open right now, so I will meet you guys back here once that's done. All right, so the main idea here is we want to have the camera know what object it needs to be following and then move towards that object if it's not already where we want it to be. So to do this, in my uh, main global variables section here, I'm going to create a reference to what I want the camera to follow. So I'm going to call this a public transform, because I just need an XY position. And I'm going to call this target. Then I'm going to create another variable here, which is going to be roughly how quickly the camera moves towards the target. I'm going to call this a public float smoothing. And I'm going to assign both of those in the editor. For now, uh, what I want to do is I'm not going to be using update. Instead, I'm going to be using uh, fixed update. Now, update happens every frame, no matter what. Fixed update happens on a... Um, actually, I don't want fixed even. I want late. Sorry. Fixed update happens whenever the physics system is set to tick, which is usually... Um, uh, 30 times a second versus 60, a late update always comes last. And I want it to come last because I want our player to be moving in the update method, and I want our camera to go towards the player in late update. If you have the camera go towards player in update, the camera script might fire before the player does, which can make your camera look um, jerky instead of nice and smooth. So what I want to do is I want to say if transform.position is not equal to target and we'll do some adjustments to this as we go we'll make like a, a dead zone in the center so that it's not exactly going directly towards the target um, and this should be target.position not just target because targets the whole transform size scale and position and we want just the position so we're going to say if our transform position isn't the target position then we're going to move towards it and the way I'm going to move towards it is by using a function called LERP, which stands for Linear Interpolation, which means that it's going to find the distance between it and the target and move a percentage of that distance each frame. So I'm going to say uh, transform.position is equal to uh, vector3.lerp. And this takes three arguments. It takes the position you're currently at, which is our transform dot position. The next argument is the position we want to go to, and so that's going to be target dot position. And then the third argument is um, the amount that we want to cover, and I'm going to put that down as smoothing. Uh, all right, cool. So I'm going to save this really quickly, and then let's pop back into Unity. Let that compile. Now, let's find our main camera, and let's attach our camera movement script to it. It needs to know what the transform is. Transform is going to be the player. And I'm going to set smoothing at 0.6 right now. And we'll explore what changing that number does. I don't need my tile palette down here anymore, so I'm just going to move that up. And let's hit play. Ah, okay, that's what I did wrong. Uh, okay, 
so actually let me explain what I did wrong so that you guys can see it so that I'm not just fixing it without explaining where the problem is because it's kind of funny all right cool so right now our player's position is negative uh, 1.26.89 with a z position of zero uh, okay sorry about that weird cut so we've got our player here whose position is at negative 1.26 and pointed on y and then zero on z if we look at our camera, our camera's position is negative 1.26.89 and then negative 4.29 on Z. So let's look at this in 3D to kind of see what's happening to the camera. So usually the camera needs to be, you see you can't see the camera at all out here. And the reason why, that's why it's just a gray screen is because our camera has gone like underneath our whole scene here. Um, let me find the camera so that I can show you. So if I move it out this way, you can see, but right now it was down here, which means that it, I needed to keep some kind of offset from the, the thing. And the reason it did that is because I just had it be vector three dot loop. So let's fix that. Uh, let's go back into our script here and we're going to make a target position. So I'm going to make a, uh, we'll call this vector three target position. And this is going to be equal to a new vector three. It would help if I could spell of uh, target dot position dot X target.position.y and then I'm going to have it be its own z position so that it stays the same z position so transform.position.z and then rather than going to target.position I'm going to go to that target position and there we go so I'm going to save that uh, let's go back into unity here I'm going to go back into 2D mode so it doesn't look so weird. And let's hit play. All right, cool. So now you can't really notice that it's doing anything to keep up. So let me move that smoothing down to, say, 0.1. And you can see now that it's moving to catch up with the player. But it's doing so smoothly. Kind of, sort of. All right, so that's part one. Part two is we're going to add some boundaries to our camera so that our camera doesn't go outside of our scene like this. So um, feel free to ask any questions in the description down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out exactly when I post a new video. You can join me in Discord. We're in chatting every day. Otherwise, have yourselves a wonderful day.